Physical science time. Let's write this down. Please. Naming and writing formulas of chemical compounds. Naming and writing the correct, well, I wouldn't necessarily say even that, the, the traditional maybe way of writing the plural of the word formula is to put an E at the end of it. That's the proper way to pluralize a lot of Latin words that end in A. Let's put, so it should be like this. In English, you say formulas. Your book says formulas. I say formulas most often, but just so that you're aware, this is one way. Also, when you're doing the Scrabble, if someone puts down the word formula, you can put an E at the end of it and make it plural, and they say, hold up, and you'll say, I'm smarter than you. Okay, anyway, then you're writing formula of chemical compounds. I did say that earlier. Yeah, I said that. Thank you for reminding me, though. There are, as you know, there are three different types of chemical bonds. Uh, two of those we have a system of naming for. The metallic bond, we usually just call what it's made of. For instance, if we have uh, an alloy, did your book talk about alloys at all? You might just as a side note, because we, that way we, have, we will have talked about all three of them. Um, an alloy is the term that we use to describe chemically bonded metals together. This is kind of, like I said, a little side note. Side note. An alloy is a... Uh, two or more types of metals, or what else could it be? Uh, and light, and two or more types of metals or metalloids bonded. And we usually just name these things like, they have kind of, for instance, I'm, I'm, some of them have special names, like the alloy electrum is an alloy of gold and silver. The alloy alnico is an alloy of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt. You, you can kind of see where the name came from. Um, and there's other things like brass is copper and zinc. You don't have to have these memorized. These are just examples of alloys. Stainless steel is an alloy. A lot of them, a lot of the ones, when we really want to talk about them in quantifiable terms, we'll say something like 20% zinc, 10% copper, 10% iron, 60% aluminum. We, that, we usually just name them by what's in them, and they're kind of just, they're really more of a mixture. They are technically chemically bonded, and they're held together by metallic bonds, but we really think of them more as mixtures, because they can have any ratio. Yeah. Whereas the other two things we're going to talk about... Well, if we're talking about metallic bonding now, what are the other two kind of bonding we're going to talk about? Ionic, Ionic and, covalent. and covalent. Those things have set ratios, and therefore we're going to talk about them more in depth because we have because they have set ratios, we have more responsibility in naming them. <clears throat> so other things that are chemical compounds, we have, as Wyatt correctly said, ionic, and we have covalent. Flow chart. We I like flowcharts. They make things nice and organized. Within ionic bonding, we're going to talk about uh, three different ways that we name ionic compounds. Let's just name the name the three different ways. You might you might choose to make your notes set up like it's going to take more room especially with the examples, then what we're actually going to be able to fit in a flowchart. So you might have like the flowchart on one page that you just fill in the, the information, like its names, and then maybe another page of like descriptions. You, you know kind of what I'm talking about? Maybe I'll do that. Um, how about I'll do this. We're going to forget about covalent for now. I'm going to make my descriptors of what I'm going to put in here over here, and then we switch to covalent, I'll do it the other way around. I think that'll work great. You good, Alexa? You don't have to do it this way. I mean, however you best think that you should take notes is fine with me. There are, the three ways that we need to talk about naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds are of binary ionic compounds, which are easy, complex ionic compounds, which are, maybe you can tell from the name, slightly more complex, and then those involving transition metals. So we're going to talk about binary ionic compounds first. Oops, I don't need to write the word first. Okay, binary ionic compounds. Binary meaning what? 
one. Yeah, relating to two things. Oh, two. two things. Relating to two things. So how many different kinds of elements do you reckon are going to be in this? Two different kinds of elements. That doesn't mean we have two atoms all the time. We just have two different kinds of elements. All we have to do, and this is kind of the fundamental thing we do for all of them, is we have to make sure, make sure what we call the oxidation numbers. Sometimes I'll call these oxidation states. Sometimes I'll even call them charges. They're not exactly the same as charges, but for us that'll satisfy our curiosity for a second. Make sure that the oxidation numbers, charges, add up to what? Can you guess? You would know it. Zero. They have to add up to zero. Yes, Pete? No. Um, make sure oxidation numbers add up to zero. So for instance, let's use an, an easy example first. If we had if we had sodium chloride, which you already know about, NaCl, which is sodium chloride. This is both the name and the formula. But I'm going to show you that the charges add up to zero. What's the charge of the sodium? No, oh, sorry. Yes. As an atom, it would be a neutral charge. But when it bonds, what's it going to do? It has one valence electron. What's it going to do when it bonds? Lose one, so it'll have a what charge, Roman? Positive. Since it lost an electron, since it lost an electron, it'll now have a positive charge. So what we call the oxidation state of the sodium is plus one. Sometimes we indicate these above them. This is not, you don't have to, I said no already, Peyton. Um, I said no. You don't have to indicate them up here, but if you're going to put them somewhere, put them up here. And they are a good little bookkeeping tool. They kind of help you keep them straight. The chlorine has how many valence electrons? Seven. And therefore, what does it want to do? Gain one, making its charge negative one, which means it has an oxidation state also of negative one. Plus one added to minus one equals zero. So then, if it gets a little bit more complicated, what if we have something like, let me, let's do an easy one first. If I say lithium, this might be one of your examples. Lithium fluoride might be an example you have to do. Now, it'll, we have the name. How are we going to write the formula for this? What should we write first? Li, L I, which is lithium, and then F, F, which is fluorine. Do you see how the fluorine became fluoride? Um, that's because we always change the ending of the second one to I, because it makes it sound nicer primarily, but also just the way we do it. Now, what we have to check out is do these oxidation states add up to zero? Well, what's the oxidation state of the lithium? Uh, Plus one, in the same way that sodium was, because it has and one valence electron. And the fluorine? Is minus one. Minus one. So they already add up to zero, so we're fine. Now what if instead we had calcium chloride? So what's the first thing we need to do? CA. CA, capital C, lowercase a, and then, and then CL. Capital C, lowercase l. But be careful, what's the charge on the calcium? And how do you know? Calcium. Calcium. Is Minus plus, plus two. two. No, plus two, because it has two valence electrons. So its oxidation state is plus two. What's the oxidation state of the chlorine? Minus one. It's still minus one. So in order to add them up to zero, what do we need to do? We put a little subscript here, because two, the charge was minus one. Two times minus one is minus two, and the charge on the calcium is plus two. So now they add up to zero again. So we change the number of them using what? Little baby? Subscripts. Subscript. We change the name of the number of them using subscripts in order to make sure they add up to zero. So far so good, right? Mm -hmm. Let's do one more just by kind of like that. Aluminum oxide. This one will be trickier, but that's okay. First of all, we can get we can get half the problem right just by writing down their symbols. What should we write first? Uh, AL. AL, capital A, lowercase L. Uh -oh. oh. This is wrong, but if you write just this on your test, I'm going to give you half credit. Now, to get it right, we need to write what this, how many we need. What's the charge on the aluminum? Look at, look at where it Two. is. No? Three. Yeah, it's plus three. It's plus three, so I'm going to put that up here. Plus three. What's the charge on the oxygen? Minus two. So is there anything we can multiply the oxygen by to get it to aluminum, to get to three? 
No, because we can only use whole numbers. So what can we do? Well, you, know, you know about doing this in math? You know about least common factor? You know about that in math? Yeah, So what can we multiply? What can we get them both to to make them add up to the same thing? Six. Six. So what do we multiply the oxygen by? Three. What do we multiply the aluminum by? Two. Al2O3. This is the correct answer. Because three times negative two is negative six. Two times positive three is positive six. They add up to zero. So to write the formula, we first put what we call, let, let's, I'm going to give you some little steps up here. One, write the form, or the, get out of the way. Write the, what am I trying to say? Symbol of the, we call this the cation. The cation has what charge? Positive. Write the name of the, the symbol of the cation first. Then, write the symbol of the anion. Can you guess what charge the anion has? Negative. Negative. And then we match charges using what? What, what things do we use? Say it, Lily. Well, we use the oxidation numbers to get, but what do we actually put in? Like, what, what do we change about this, the formula? Subscripts, using subscripts. And what are these the steps of? I probably should have labeled it that first. These are the steps to do what? Find. To find the what? The what? Find, find the formula. This is to write the formula. Formula of binary ionic compounds. Do you have questions about this one so far? This one, I would say this is the easiest, but it's also 90% of what we're going to do with the other one. So even though the other ones are more complicated, if you can do this, this is the basis of all the other ones. We have to make sure their oxidation states match. Questions about this? You have a question, Roman? You, just need, you feel like you need more practice? Okay, that's fine. Is everyone done with what I have in the box? Uh, I'm not going to race up here, but is everyone done with what's in the box? Is anyone not done with what's in the box? Okay. So now, we're going to do the opposite of that. So instead of, we're not moving on to complex yet. Instead of, though, instead of having the name and writing the formula, now we're going to be given the, the formula and write the name. So, so it's kind of almost the reverse of this. Uh, let's say that we have, let's say that we have this one. What do I write first? I'm, I'm looking for the name. What do I write first? Strontium, because that's that's the first guy's name, the, the cation's name. We write that first, and then we just write the the second guy, but we change the ending to I, fluoride. Okay. And then for this one, uh, let's do. This is supposed to be a, a G. I'm I'm always accidentally making my G's look like two kinds. But yeah, so magnesium oxide. Yep, and we change it to ox I. Even though oxygen, we don't, we just change the ending to I, and so all of that igen becomes I, so it's oxide. Yes, Peyton? Are we supposed to wear a hoodie? Next, we have CSCL. CSCL. What should I name it? Something cesium. Cesium. Chloride. Make sure you name it chloride and not chlorine. So the ending has to end in I. These are fairly easy. I would say these, the, the naming is even easier than the writing form. So we don't have to worry about the, the little numbers will already be given to us. Questions about that? No. Oh, this is still binary. These are still binary. These are still binary ionic compounds. Now we're going to move on to complex ionic compounds. Look with me at the chart. Actually, your book does transition metals first. Let's do transition metals first. Let's do transition metals first. It's the same fundamental principles, except we have to name them differently. We have to name them differently. Um, let's start with the naming. If I have this, we could name it as normal, like what we're used to, what we had just done. Iron, 
oxide. But the trouble is that unlike the group one and group two metals, iron can have multiple oxidation states, which means that iron can be either a two plus charge, a three plus charge, or a six plus charge. That's not always the case for all of them, but in iron's case, it can be any of those three. And so we have to indicate what kind of iron we're talking about, because depending on the oxidation state of the iron, it has totally different properties. This kind of iron oxide is what we call rust. It's brown-ish, brownish, reddish. You know about rust. But there's another kind of iron oxide that's black and forms what we call bluing on like rifles and stuff. That's a different kind of iron oxide. And they have different purposes and they have different uses and they're completely different substances. And so we have to have a way to differentiate between this kind of iron oxide and the other kind. So what we do is we put in Roman numerals after the iron the oxidation state of this iron. How can I tell what the oxidation state of this iron is right here? Uh, Assuming this is correct, which it is, well, what would its oxidation state be? What's the oxidation state of the oxygen? What's the charge of the oxygen? Um, minus, one. minus two. Minus it's two. minus two. So then what must the charge of the iron be? Minus two. You don't mean minus, plus you mean plus, plus, two. plus two. Sorry. And so then if I'm going to write the charge of the iron in parentheses, what should I write? It's a Roman numeral. So it's going to be iron, I, 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 oxide. We call it, we name this iron two oxide. That's how we say it. So what's this little thing in the parentheses? What does that represent? Roman it's the Roman numerals of what, though? Oxidation. Oxidation state. We can also call it a charge. Oxidation state. Don't forget it. I'm going to yell at you. Don't forget it. I'm not going to yell at you. Don't forget it. The chemistry kids have a super hard time doing this. And they always do, and you probably will too, because it seems really easy. We'll get to this in a second. But when, when we see this and we have to write down what it is, it's so tempting just to write Fe. Two, oh, but that's wrong. This thing in the parentheses represents what? Oxidation number. Oxidation number. So then let's just do the other one now. How are we name this one? Still, still going to be some kind of iron oxide, except now what is the oxidation state of the iron? It's three. It's three because if the oxygens are negative two, they add up to what? If the oxygens are negative 2, they add up to negative 6. And so the iron must be positive 6, but there are two of them. So each iron is 3. So iron 3 oxide. These are totally different. They're made out of the same stuff, but they're totally different chemical compounds. So when we have a transition metal, we do it the same as the binary, except we have to put the charge in the name. Let's do this one together. Oh, 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 sorry. What's my first step? Copper. 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 That's copper chloride. chloride. Leave some space between them because you're going to put a, the oxidation state in the parentheses. And what's the what's the charge of the chlorine? Work backwards from it because we we, we always know the charges of the anion. Chlorine's negative one, so must, what must the copper be? Well, plus one. So we just write copper one chloride. Questions about this? Let's do another practice one. Um, name them. Nickel, three, fluoride. Because the fluorines are each negative one, and since there are three of them, the charge on the nickel must be plus three. Let's do the, let's do the, no, I'm not saying the opposite. Let's do the converse of this. Let me give you one, and you have to write the name of it. Let's say, Palladium 4 oxide. What's first? Well, first we need to find what palladium is. I know it's PD, so I'm going to write PD. And then I just put a subscript 4, right? No. 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 Yell at yourself in your brain, pretend I'm yelling at you. No, that's not what the 4 means. The next thing we write is the oxygen. What does the 4 mean? It's oxygen. 
oxidation state. So the palladium is plus four. Oxygen is always what? Minus two. So how many, how many, what do I need to change about this? It should be oxygen two. Yeah, PdO2. Because we need two oxygens to add up to negative four to match the positive four of the palladium. How did I know the palladium was positive four? It told me in the name. Okay, one more, and then we're going to move on to the next, the complex ones. We have to get through this. Um, let's do... Okay, and then... What's the chlorine going to be? Cl. And then how many chlorines do we need? Seven. So you got it. Mn Cl seven. That's that part. That's exactly right. Okay. I can do that better than the other part. What's that? Chlorine is minus one. The manganese is plus seven. And so there must be seven chlorines. Remember, this is the amount of the chlorines. You have. Does that kind of help? Are you asking how does he know that it's going to be seven chlorines? Yeah, since the other one was two and it says four. Oh, this is four, and this is the, the Roman numeral seven. VII is seven. How did you get seven for that one? Because, oh, because chlorine is negative one, where oxygen was minus two. Does that make sense? Since the chlorine is minus one, we have to have just as many of those as there are positive charges. Questions? You have a question, boys? I was playing it too. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's move on to the, you'll, you will have more practice with this, and I will help you as we, as we sit down and do it together on our worksheet. But for now, we're going to move on to complex ones so that we can get all this in a video so that you can watch it and you can say, oh, yeah, I remember. I remember that I'm doing it wrong. So let's move on to complex ones. Complex. Shh. Complex ionic compounds is what we call it. If one or more things in there is what we call a polyatomic ion. A chart in your book on page 619 lists, uh, what, five, seven, eight? Lists eight common polyatomic ions. Let me tell you, when you're in chemistry, you're going to be responsible for memorizing 28 of these. But the book here gives you eight common polyatomic ions. So look with me on page 619. If you're watching this online and you don't have your book, you can look up table of polyatomic ions there everywhere. It's called Table 4 of Polyatomic Ions. The hidden talent you have to open books to pages. So look at all these. Do you see these polyatomic ions? First of all, what's, what's polyatomic probably mean? We know what ion is. Ion means it has a charge. What's polyatomic mean? Yeah, multiple ions. Multiple, oh, sorry, multiple atoms. So these are ions. Ions that are made of multiple atoms. Look at all of them on our list here. You can see they have many different kinds of atoms within them, or at least two. For instance, ammonium is NH4, 1 plus. Oops, I put plus plus, but I meant to put 1 plus. Multiple atoms, in this case five, one, one nitrogen and four hydrogens. And all together they have a plus one charge. And we use this just in a formula just like we would use any of the metals. So for instance, if I had this, NH4Cl, we'd call this ammonium, which is the name from the book, chloride. A little hinty, here's a little hinty. Here's a little hinty. If you find, if you find that the thing you're trying to name has more than two elements, meaning it's not binary, if it's not binary, it must be what then? Complex. So something in it has to be applied to Write that down somewhere. If the thing you're trying to name, you don't have to rephrase it that way, but if the thing you're trying to name has more than two kinds of elements, something has to be a polyatomic ion. There must be a polyatomic ion there somewhere. For ionic compounds. That's not true for cocaine. But for ionic compounds it is. So for instance, if we have instead this one. What's the P word? Polyatomic. And, and check this out. Do you, see, do you see sulfate on our list? 
sulfate. SO4 2 minus. Do you see that little four, just like with the ammonium, this little four, stop it please, Josh. This this little four is part of the symbol for this. Think about these almost like the elements, except they have a little number that's part of their symbols too. So sulfate is SO4. That four is part of this. So Na2SO4. What do I name that thing? What's Na? Sodium. And then what's the name of this? I just said it. Sodium sulfate. Sulfate. Sodium sulfate. This is in your shampoo that people hate with in their bits. Really? Mm -hmm. If you look on your shampoo bottle, it's going to say sodium sulfate. It might say something like sodium laureate sulfate or something, but it's basically the same thing. And that makes, that's a good soap. But people think it gives you zits and they, they, some people think it gives you cancer. I don't know. Anyway, this is sodium sulfate. That's what I do. This is sodium sulfate. Let's do another one real quick here. Uh, let's have, oh, oh yeah, this is a good one. Hmm. No. Um, good one. Copper. Good. Copper. Nitrate. Nitrate. Um, nitrate. No. Yeah, we have to make sure we look on our list. Nitrate. But that's not all, because copper is a transition metal, so it must be. Oh, it's got to have an oxidation state. What is it? What do you say? It's got to have an oxidation state. Not three. What's the charge on? What's the charge on the nitrate? Look at nitrate on your list. What's the charge on that? One minus, so what must the copper be? One plus, so we name it copper one nitrate. Look, we can use transition metals and polyatomic ions together. Sometimes we have to. Uh, I have now, to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna do one example of the other way around, but I think that should be sufficient. Let's do, let's write uh, calcium acetate. Just to illustrate one more thing, you. We might do a second one. Calcium, which is. Calcium, which is CA. Yeah, you're right. It does have a two plus charge. The CA is a symbol. And then acetate. Find acetate on here. Do you see it? Where's acetate? Yeah, well, so say it. C2H2O2. What's the charge on the acetate? Look at your chart. Negative one. Negative one. Uh oh. Acetate's negative one. What's the calcium? Plus two. Plus two. So how many acetates do we need? One. No, we already got one. How many do we need? Two to match. So what we have to do, listen, Mitchell, this is so important to you. Mitchell, this is so important to you. If we need to have more than one acetate, because the acetate's minus one, calcium is plus two, we have to put the acetate in parentheses and then put a two outside of it. Just like you know like when you distribute in math. If you, need, if you need to multiply the polyatomic ion, put it in parentheses first. You have to. Calcium acetate. Let's do one more, like just because I'm afraid you haven't got that. I have to talk to my Yes, I'm going to raise this up here because I'm not really using it. Rubidium chlorate. Okay, so RB, you're close. What's chlorate? CLO3. What's the charge on the chlorate? Negative one. So what do I have to multiply it by? What's the charge on the rubidium? What's the charge on the rubidium? Oh, you're right. Dang it. Never mind. Mm. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I tried to make it. I, I meant. Let's do this one now. This is what I meant to do. Barium. Shh. Barium chlorate. There we go. So barium is BA. Chlorate, we already just talked about, ClO3. What's the charge on the barium? Barium. Two plus. So what do I need with my chlorate? Chlorate. Double it. Double it. So I have to put in parentheses and then put a two afterward. As we do practice with these, I'm going to help you get through them a little bit more. But this, this is sufficient for the complex ones. We're going to have to move on to covalent because we're running out of time. This is meant to be a survey of this. I, I, we will spend more time as we practice them, but I want to get through it so that we have all the information we need so when you watch the video, you're like, oh, I'm happy that I learned this. Um, questions about polyatomic ions? Alex, you got a question about polyatomic ions? Be careful because if it ends 
an eight, eight. or eight, it's a polyatomic ion. You see how it might be easy, if you only have this information, you might just think RBCl. But it has to be because it ends in chlorate. It's not chloride, which would be RBCl. It's chlorate, which is RBCLO3. Sometimes someone, maybe everyone, is going to try to name this rubidium chlorine oxygen. That's wrong. If you're saying the name of three elements in your name, you're wrong. Something has to be a polyatomic ion. Okay? Am I clear? Okay, now we're going to move on to covalent. Covalent, you'll find this to be easier. It'll be like a nice little coast down the hill. Covalent. Covalent naming. The thing about covalent naming is it all works on uh, what we call prefixes. And all the little numbers have prefixes in covalent naming. What's a prefix? You know this from elementary school. What's a prefix? It goes before the root of a word. The prefixes, and I'm just going to write them out here because we got just a little bit of time. Mono means one. Di means two. Tri means three. Tetra means four. Penta means five. Hexa means six. Di. Di. Bi is the Latin prefix for two. Di is the Greek prefix or two, and these are all Greek prefixes. Anyway, hexa, hepta is seven, octa, hey, we've heard that before, is eight, nana is nine, and deca is ten. And it, it rarely, rarely, rarely ever goes higher than ten. Petra? Somewhere around here, tetra. No. Penta. Somewhere here, all these you recognize because they're also the names of the gons, right? Pentagon. Five sides. Hexagon, six sides. Heptagon, seven sides, etc. So those you know for sure. Di and tri you probably know. Mono you might know. Bi is Latin. Di is Greek. So we use the Greek names. But tetra, the way up, this is, for some reason, someone strug people struggle with this, probably because you haven't seen it as much. But tetra, I remember this one, because all them little tetris bricks, remember tetris? Mm -hmm. All the little bricks have four little sub bricks in them. Every single one of them does. In fact, that's why its name is tetris. Is because they all have four little blocks. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Tetra means four. That's why it's called Tetris. Anyhow, all we have to do to both name or write the formulas for covalent compounds is we just say with the prefix how many there are. For, so for instance, let me go over here for a second. SO2. First of all, how do we know if it's covalent or ionic? This one's covalent, but how do I know? No? Two nonmetals is covalent. These are both nonmetals. Sulfur and oxygen are nonmetals. In ionic, they were all a metal and a nonmetal. Or they had a polyatomic ion, which is an ion. So for this, we name it sulfur. We usually, listen to me please, we usually omit the mono unless it's differentiating between two different compounds. We'll talk about that in a second. But we just call it sulfur. How many oxygens are there? Two. Two. So we call it what? Sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide. What about this one? Sulfur trioxide. There you go. So what about this one? What about this one? Sulfur. No. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It was carbon dioxide. Have you heard of him before? Yes, you have. Carbon dioxide. Now because, this is where the thing I was just saying comes in, about him. Be because there's a more common carbon oxide, we call this one carbon monoxide. Have you heard of carbon monoxide? Yes. And we call it that because we're specifying that there's only one oxygen, where usually there are two. Carbon monoxide. And then just as another example, what if I gave you this one? Uh-oh. What's its name? Uh, PF5. PF5 is not a name. Phosphorus. Don't name your son PF5. Don't name him Phosphorus anything, but... Phosphorus. 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 Ph
It's no longer considered an anion, but we still change the name of the last one to I, okay? I'm going to give you this worksheet. No, that's not true. I'm going to give you the assignment from the book. You do that on your own. Tomorrow when you come to class, we are going to spend some time working together on the worksheet and the chapter review. I want it to be together because I want to make sure that I'm here to answer questions that you have and so you just not like blindly groping your way through it. In fact, if you're going to consider groping tonight, don't do it. That's a bad, bad time. 621. We're going to do one through... <laughs> We're going to do 1 through 5. Six, 621, 1 through 5 is due tomorrow. We'll talk about that, and then you'll have the rest of your class to work on your assignment. What do you say about that? It's hard. No, 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 no. What do you say about when I said you have the rest of tomorrow to work on your assignment? Maybe. Yay. It's okay. I'll we'll figure it out somehow. That's good. Yeah, but what do you say about it when I do Thank something? You. Yay. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. It's 621, 1 through 6. Do tomorrow, Wednesday, for Mitchell. There's only five questions. Really? Yeah, well, it's not one through six. Why? And there is no, I was hoping you, I was giving you one. Just let him This is the first attention these papers. The camera here is all. I could be saying much. handed it to me like that. Get to work. Get to work. Yes. There is. Listen, homies, I don't know how much you care about this, I would guess none, but yeah. there is also a video that I've made when I show this to the chemistry, because this is probably a little bit more in-depth if you want to watch that one. If you go to one videos, you can watch one by the chemistry.